Hi, I'm Ella Rides from Now in a Minute Theatre. I'd like to say thank you to Joanna Grace for asking me to speak at this year's conference and also for organising the PMRD conference year after year. A little bit about myself, I'm a acting graduate from the drama school Rose Bruford College and I graduated in 2018. I run a multi-sensory theatre company called Now in a Minute Theatre. It's a not-for-profit organisation that was born in 2020. Great year for starting a new business. Um, since then we've been developing our understanding of our um, audience's access needs and also uh, building an identity within this field. We've been working on some rehearsal and developments and uh, working with a great team of actors and sensory facilitators on our own shows such as Loon Maria and Tutu. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is an exploration into what makes theatre exciting and relevant for people with complex needs. So a lot of my training was centred around words and it, um, since then I've been looking at whether words are actually very useful at all. It turns out that we do like words, we especially like definitions, uh, they test our knowledge and they, for anybody that's done a crossword they are very satisfying. Um, and they should provide individuals with a basis of understanding um, and they should offer transparency for social interactions so needs are better met and we have accurate identification of understanding of what people require. However, this only applies if there is two robots talking to each other. As we both know that people say what they don't mean and don't mean what they say. Um, but before we have access to words and have access to language, we are still reacting to things all around us and therefore we are always feeling. We're, we are complex from the start. Our wants and needs and connections to people and, pe and places and things are ever changing. It is honestly a wonder you parents get through it all. <laughs> Unlike the use of language, our feeling is not an age or ability reliant thing. Um, even if we can't name or recognise or assess them, they are still bubbling away. Our um, stomach is folding on, in on itself, ants are crawling all over our body, or um, our bones are melting. These are some ways that I've tried to describe my big emotions, and as you can imagine, they are often misinterpreted. Um, but then worried and excited don't really seem to fit either. And I think that's because uh, our emotions are more than what we assign to them. And uh, this might be a trouble with interception for some people, but I think we can all recognise a moment in our lives where words just haven't been enough. I think naturally we tend to dilute uh, experiences through simplistic language. The word love is used at the altar. Um, on our wedding day, but is also used to describe our feelings towards a chocolate bar. <laughs> Both may be true, but our language is limited and therefore very simplistic. Our emotions are endlessly complex and are hard to pin down whether you're neurotypical or neurodivergent. Um, and if we assess the success of multisensory theatre in the moment with words, it is too dismissive. I think we should aim to constantly assess interactions with our audience holistically, using the event as a whole. Uh, so for example, if I was using a prop like this, and this is the sensory experience we were exploring together, uh, we, we may be looking and connecting with our individual by saying, okay, they're looking at the object, they're smiling, they're doing that, okay, they're happy. Okay. I think this is where we might be going wrong in the theatrical sense, is that actually that's just teaching. Um, I've worked in special education needs schools for a long time and that is step by step. We're looking, we're thinking, we're reacting, great, we've ticked the box. But I think theatre is something a little bit different. I think we should be there in the moment and just be experiencing what we're feeling. Um, and without giving it a name, it can sometimes be quite difficult because a lot of us, if we find something difficult or um, 
new or surprising, like the majority of the world around us, we tend to want to name it and give it a name and it does help. But I think when we're a performer, we need to make sure we're there in the moment. So therefore, words might be a bit limiting for us when it comes to theatrics. However, one person that seems to have mastered the art of wordsmith um, is Shakespeare himself. So let's talk a little bit about his influence. Now don't get me wrong, I love words in lots of contexts. For example, one of the greatest wordsmiths of all time, Shakespeare, as you can see, throughout the years, the aesthetics of his productions have changed dramatically. Um, but the words have always stayed the same. And I think it really shows his talent when you can see the words that are combined to create such vivid um, imagery and detailed metaphors. And this is the real spectacle that I think people go and watch his shows for. For example, in Henry V, Bardolf is described as his face is all bobcles and whelks and knobs and flames of fire and his lips ploughs at his nose and it is like a coal of fire, sometimes blue and sometimes red, but his nose is executed and his fire is out. Now this might may suffice for our neurotypical audiences uh, to create an image within their head, but I think for our sensory beings in our audience, we are aiming to expand this experience to tickle all of the senses. Um, imagine getting to feel the heat radiating off his face, of his red flush cheeks, or exploring masks with actual knobs and uh, brass instruments for the nose, and seeing your shiny reflection distorted in his face. Um, I, I argue this shows that wordsmiths such as Shakespeare can have the capacity and relevance for people with PMLD, um, but it is our job to go beyond the words and join the audience in this wonderful sensory landscape that can be created. So emotive language can be used as a sounding off board, I think, for our work. Now in a minute is aiming to make ambitious theatre that can capture a moment and let it scatter off to all our possible senses. However, I think it's important that we don't just rely on these wordsmiths for creating our imagery with their words uh, to create our own theatre. I think we can also do it ourselves by practising open being. So allowing ourselves to be surprised by sensory experiences and resist the urge to presume our relationship with it. For example, I was lucky enough to be picked as a handful of students from Rose Bufford College to go to Oily Cart Summer Camp uh, to work as a support for the practitioners taking part in the course. We acted as runners and recorded the process and for assessment and adaptation throughout the week. Here I was shown ways to unfold meaning and story solely from sensory experiences. It affected my own acting practice so much so that my final year dissertation was titled How do multisensory theatre making processes challenge current actor training practices? A small reading from that I'll just demonstrate as well. So without forcing it, your imagination created a journey for itself out of physical connections with that you'd made with your partner and the objects. I saw a bowl of lentils, um, orange lentils on the floor while we were waiting and I thought of the warm aromatic spices filling the Indian air. However, when I started to play with it and with my eyes closed, I was surprised by the coldness I felt and uh, the sound of them crashing over my hands into the metal bowl, which created a more sharp and clinical environment forming in my head. So already, uh, this, this clashed with the warm and peaceful setting that I'd imagined at the start. Already I had created a form of friction or confliction within my um, head, which was far more exciting than just one or the other. This feeling is supported in my training, as we have learned that the making of great drama is the conflict and the contrasts within a scene or within a person. Another technique that um, I found was really interesting as a jumping off point 
um, for the sensory work that we do is Laban effort movements. Now these are integral in my acting training um, and consist of a combination of efforts. So Laban named each different type of uh, the way we move um, according to its sensation or feeling that it gave us. Um, these efforts are then broken down into motion factors of space, time, weight and flow. Essentially, it's some fancy words to tell us how we move our body. Um, and one thing that I really enjoyed was actually adding these characteristics to describe the four elements. So fire, water, air and earth. So air is direct, light, free and sudden. And earth is sustained, bound, heavy and direct. Water is indirect, free, sustained and heavy. And fire is sudden, light, direct and bound. Um, so these are kind of um, cue words that we can use to get into that um, state of being. Like, like this, we can also put those elements into different environments. So we can take water that is usually indirect and free and sustained and heavy and put it into a, a pressure washer. So something that you'd use to clean the concrete or the decking outside. It's now, it's chemically the same, it's still water but you've changed the environment. So it's now direct and bound and it's not free and spontaneous anymore. It just hasn't got the capacity because it's battling the surrounding that's been given. So you've got that element of drama there with, where you've got a free and spontaneous being one, being trapped, being made bound and direct. Another fun example is uh, clay and water. So once heavy and bound and have meters and meters under the ground is now wobbling and free and chaotic on top of a spinning wheel um, on top of a pottery wheel and you know the, the it seeps into the cracks in your shoes and it and then the, the hot sun comes out and it then hardens and cracks and becomes fragile and this ever-changing element it's still clay but it's been changed by its environments around it and um, in that we can see drama, we can see that it's battling against itself. So we found that um, this is kind of a reason why messy play was so addictive uh, and because it is a never ending story. It's that element being moved and changed and us exploring that with them. Now this shows us that our, our story, no matter how fantastical that we want to make it in our theatre, we can explore elements of it through messy play or through playing with sensory items um, because the drama that we want to create is there waiting. Um, however, when we were in um, rehearsals, we did find that this state, although fun, um, is hard to sustain after many performances of playing with the same bit of clay, you're still having to react to be the first time that you've ever played with it. Um, so this is where training to stay present really comes in handy, which I'll talk about in a minute. Staying present is the foundation of a lot of acting training and people use lots of different techniques to try and achieve this. Um, I actually started training in Tai Chi, which was with Nikki from Tai Chi Simplicity um, just over a year ago now, um, after hearing him speak um, about last at last year's PMOD conference. Um, his ability to find internal sensory stories within the form was really interesting and um, it's a very powerful tool in this very fast-paced world uh, to enable you to connect to your body and to your senses. Um, we discovered that the body is a huge contradiction and finding the balance in the forces is what you try and master in Tai Chi. Um, this basis of movement inspires a lot of the work in Now in a Minute um, and its practice helps performers also remain present as well. So we can take inspiration from several of the movements and several of the um, feelings that it conjures up. Uh, but what we're trying to remain is remain grounded and strong while also remaining fluid, gentle and light. A bit like a, an elephant whose effortless movement holds potential and purpose. 
because it's an internal martial art as well, this can be felt and enjoyed by anybody um, and by whichever sense you find most meaningful. So all sensory information is valid and can give each person a different connection to the movement. So a lot of our audience um, may use different senses to um, get into the movement and be able to understand the meaning behind it. And I'm really excited to learn more about Tai Chi and more Tai Chi forms, as we know that it not can only help our performers to stay present, but also can tell emotive and magical stories of its own. In summary, I'm really excited to see what Now in a Minute Theatre does in the future, and also to challenge ourselves to explore further what the natural world has for us to play with and um, to find the playful drama within those elements. Also to endeavour when performing to sit on the edge of the wave with our audience and see if we can balance everything around us. So in, our, in conclusion, I'm off to go and play uh, with some messy play, but thank you so much. This has actually been very helpful to ironically put this into words. Thank you very much. Bye.